here at Phoenix. Harvick with a great restart. Jumps out in front of Kyle Busch in a turn one. The electing the restart in the outside lane is Kevin Harvick. Kyle Busch having to settle in the line in second. A wiggle for Brad Keselowski. He'll give up two spots off of turn number two as Greg Biffle and Paul Menard go by. Kyle Busch has to deal with his teammate Denny Hamlin fighting for second. They are absolutely side by side. That allows Kevin Harvick to pull out a lead by some two carlings over the rest of the field. Field works off turn number four as Danica Patrick spins up in turn number four. The white flag is out this time. Kevin Harvick is the leader and takes it back to one. It is all Kevin Harvick at the front of the field. They are side by side for second. Denny Hamlin to the outside of Kyle Busch as Harvick pulls away at the point. He continues to pull away through the dog leg, up the hill, into turn three. Kevin Harvick's lead is now some five, six carlings over a closing Denny Hamlin. Kyle Busch is in the third spot. And Denica Patrick involved in a crash, but here comes Kevin Harvick. It took 44 tries. But Kevin Harvick is going back to victory lane. They are crashing into the start-finish line. Danica Patrick is hit. Ryan Newman is involved as they work back to turn number one. Paul Menard is involved in the accident, as is Kurt Busch. Several other cars go piling in. Brad Keselowski, it appears, may have missed the incident that broke loose just off of turn number four. Danica Patrick has got the most damage, but there were a half a dozen or so other cars that came piling in, sliding into turn number one. Mark Martin is involved. Uh, Kurt Busch is involved. And again, it was Danica Patrick who had spun going into turn number three. She was trying to make it back across the start-finish line. There was some checking up going in the field, and Yendi, Paul Menard got some of it. Uh, Ryan Newman got some. Mark Martin, uh, Danica Patrick, uh, along with Kurt Busch here just past the start-finish line as Kevin Harvick has won here at Phoenix on a wild, wild day of racing. Indeed they have, and i got to believe, Jason Toy, that the celebration is on. Well, Richard Childress sitting down here walking. Richard, it's been one heck of a weekend when it comes to RCR equipment, but you guys make it in victory lane. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it was a great day. NASCAR knew that car was putting oil all the way down. They should have never tore all these cars up at the end of the day. Kevin about wrecked as well. I can't figure out what they're doing up there. All right, that's Richard Childress. He's happy on one side and happy not happy on the other side as a Kevin Harvick lights it up down in turn four. An emotional day at Phoenix has come to an end. Kevin Harvick has won the Advocare 500. You'll hear from him in the top five coming up. Kevin Harvick with enough fuel to not only celebrate but to drive to Gatorade Victory Lane. You'll hear from him coming up. First, though, let's see our top five. Jason Toy? Yeah, Denny Hamlin sits down here, looks things over on the FedEx Ground Toyota and finishes up in second and Tell you what, it's kind of crazy those last couple of laps. Take us through it. Yeah, I mean, the track is just so slick. We're running on such hard tires that you can't can't get a grip on it, and it uh, makes for exciting racing like we saw today. So uh, proud of our FedEx Ground Toyota camera team. We uh, fall back. I wish we could have pulled off the sweep here, but still 1-2 is pretty good. A good finish here for Denny Hamlin in the runner-up spot. So Denny Hamlin uh, makes it a good run for him. Uh, Kyle Busch, uh, his teammate, uh, two very good race cars this afternoon. Uh, Denny coming home second. Kyle coming home unofficially in that third spot. Let's check back in downstairs with Jason Toy. Well, a lot of the drivers continuing to uh, jump out of their rides here. We'll grab a word with uh, Brad Keselowski after a sixth-place finish here in just a moment. Okay, so Brad Keselowski will pick up the championship point lead by 20 over Jimmy Johnson as we head to Homestead Miami Speedway. And, Jeff, it looks like it's going to be between those two guys because the next man in line is Casey Kane, who moved ahead of Clint Boyer. And Kane is 50 points out of the lead. So a two-man fight going to Ford Championship weekend next week at Homestead. Well, and, and based on what we have seen here this weekend, it does not mean that Brad Keselowski just strolls into Miami uh, with the championship all wrapped up. We saw that uh, unfold here this weekend for sure. Back downstairs to Jason. Brad Keselowski comes in seven behind to start the weekend and comes out 21 ahead here unofficially. But take us through the run here today, particularly that last lap. Yeah, we had a really, really strong car on the long runs, but uh, I wasn't very good on the restarts, and that was something I got to get better at. But uh, the, the team did a great job giving me an awesome car, and we, we survived the carnage, uh, specifically on them last few restarts, and uh, I felt very lucky for that. All right, you get into the final race now, 21 ahead, like I said, unofficially until tomorrow. But what are your thoughts as you head into this championship run? Well, you know, nothing's over till it's over. Uh, and... Um, the same problems that we had uh, or that Jimmy had today, we could have next week at Homestead, and so we just need to keep our head down and focus on what lays ahead. All right, your points leader, Brad Keselowski, finishes sixth. All right, again, has to be very, very happy with the way things turned out today compared to what everybody else was dealing with throughout the, the running of this event. His closest championship contenders, Jimmy Johnson and Clint Boyer, both having problems falling way back. 
Brad finishes in the sixth position, avoids several bullets here today, and goes into the championship point lead by 20 as we go to four championship weekend next weekend. But the big celebration again for Kevin Harvick in victory lane after a terrible weekend, losing race trucks and race cars. They come back out on top here today, winning at Phoenix. Well, maybe it's a just reward. You know, when you stay at it and you persevere, and that's one thing about Richard Childress and that entire racing team. I don't care if we're talking about the Truck Series, Nationwide Series, or here in the Sprint Cup Series. Richard Childress and that racing team will persevere, and that's really what Kevin Harvick had to do today. Let's hear from Jimmy Johnson. And, Jimmy, uh, disappointment, certainly. Walk us through what happened out there on the racetrack to put you in the wall. Yeah, we blew a tire coming off of turn four, and... Um, you know, hit the wall real hard and damaged the race car. And I think we would have been in the top five, maybe at best, probably seventh or eighth, the way the race was unfolding. And uh, it's unfortunate to have, you know, the day end like this, intentionally end our season, um, or our hopes for a championship this way. Describe now the emotions and what you guys have to do to regroup, rally back when you get to Miami. Uh, well, it's, that's what this team's made of. We'll always rally, regroup, and do all we can. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of control or all control in the championship, and it's um, you know, we can go down there and win the race and do everything on our behalf, and it still won't net us a championship. So um, you know, we'll go down and do our part and just see how things unfold. Um, today was proof that uh, you know, anything can happen in this sport, and um, you know, we'll see how things shake out in Miami. That's Jimmy Johnson's thoughts as he's brought his battered uh, Cobalt Tools Lowe's Chevrolet back here. 20 points down as they head for the final race of 2012. All right, so that's uh, Jimmy Johnson. A tough day here at Phoenix International Raceway for the Lowe's team. Again, Keselowski has a championship point lead. It is by 20 over Jimmy. Casey Kane moves to third, 50 points out. Boyer drops to fourth, 52 back. Then it's Denny Hamlin in the fifth spot. He picked up two positions anyway. Uh, Matt Kenseth falls to sixth. Greg Biffle, 7th, Kevin Harvick, 8th, Tony Stewart, ninth, Jeff Gordon, 10th. That's the way they stack up heading to Homestead next weekend of the championship point standings, which are brought to you by CarQuest uh, Auto Parts. CarQuest Auto Parts has over 3,000 locations across North America. Great people great products and great prices. And by the way, we just want to uh, remind everybody that uh, while we had a spectacular crash here bringing this race to a close, everybody able to climb from their cars, uh, it was crazy, but uh, everybody is in good shape. Now let's go down to Gatorade Victory Lane and hear from the winner, Kevin Harvick. Oh, Kevin Harvick, he jumped out of the car and grabbed a Budweiser, but he might have just got something better than that. His young child's first trip to Victory Lane, Kevin, congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's um, what a great day. Yeah. You know, uh, car was really tight to start with, and, and these guys did a great job on pit road. He did a great job with strategy and, and just gave us a chance. And, and from there, we raced and uh, were able to put ourselves in position to uh, to race for the win. And, and uh, on the restart, so we were able to get going pretty good. And, and uh, that last one was, was a little tense regardless. And, and then we had to dirt track it through the oil there off of turn four. But uh, regardless, it's a great day for our Budweiser Chevy and, and uh, just glad to be in victory lane. So much going on. I know you've had an eventful weekend, worried about the future. This sport's a lot about winning races. Talk about these guys, these crew guys, and you guys able to get the win at the end of what's been a rough season. Yeah, it has been a tough year, but uh, to, to get into victory lane uh, eases a lot of pain. And uh, regardless of what, what's happening in the future, we're racing for now. And we and, and now is uh, we're here in victory lane, and next week we want to be in the same spot. So uh, we got to keep working towards that. Congratulations. Thank you. There we go. That's Kevin Harvick celebrating with his crew down here in Gatorade Victory Lane. Let's take a look here at the leaderboard from today's Advocare 500. Kevin Harvick gets the win. Denny Hamlin comes in in second. Third is Kyle Busch. Fourth is Casey Kane. And uh, fifth is Ryan Newman. Let's go to Alex Hayden. With Kyle Busch back here in the Sprint Cup Series garage. Kyle, I know that's got to be a tough one after a dominating performance. What was the difference at the end? Driver just gave it away. Just didn't know. Didn't know what to do uh, when it came down to crunch time. You know, all those caution flags and everything. Cars were real loose, no handling. Everybody's was on restarts. But, you know, I picked the wrong lane once, and uh, it it took the race away. That was J.D. Gibbs that came up and gave Kyle Busch a big hug in the middle of his words and patted him on the chest and told him everything's going to be okay. Kyle Busch, I think, a little bit strong on himself on that one, blaming himself for letting one get away. All right, let's uh, give you the leaderboard once again. Kevin Harvick gets the win in the Advocare 500. Denny Hamlin comes in second. Kyle Busch third. Fourth is Casey Kane. And fifth is Ryan Newman. And don't forget, because he finished in the top ten today, you can celebrate at Outback Steakhouse on Monday with a free Bloomin' Onion with any purchase, like the 9.99 steak dinner, always fresh in the Outback. So Newman fifth. Brad Keselowski comes in sixth. It's Greg Biffle finishing seventh. 
Kurt Busch was eighth, Paul Menard ninth, and Mark Martin tenth. Carl Edwards finishes eleventh this afternoon, Juan Pablo Montoya twelfth, Jeff Burton thirteenth, Matt Kenseth fourteenth. Finishing fifteenth, Bobby Labonte, sixteenth to Eric El Marola, seventeenth to Danica Patrick. Marcus Ambrose finished eighteenth, nineteenth goes to Travis Quapple, and twentieth to Tony Stewart. Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes in twenty first today, Casey Mears twenty second, Jamie McMurray was twenty third. Regan Smith, 24th, and Landon Castle, 25th. 26th, Dave Blaney, 27th, Joey Logano. Finishing 28th, Clem Boyer, 29th, Timmy Hill, and Jeff Gordon comes in 30th. Sam Hornish, Jr., 31st. Jimmy Johnson, 32nd. David Reagan, 33rd. 34th to David Stremme. 35th today to Stephen Light. Uh, 36th to David Gilliland. Josh Wise, 37th. Michael McDowell was 38th. 39th to Joe Nemechek. David Rudiman, 40th. 41st to Mike Bliss. And Jason Leffler was 42nd. And Martin Truex Jr. finishes 43rd here today at Phoenix. Let's go down to Jason Toy. Ryan Newman finishes up in fifth. He brings home a beaten race car, but a top five today. What about those last laps? The uh, race car is junk. Uh, you know, it's a good run for uh, our Quick and Loan Chevrolet. Veterans Day special paint scheme. We're really proud of everything there, but um, really disappointed in uh, the way NASCAR handled that last lap there. That was uh, that was not not fair to the drivers at all. All right, Ryan Newman, obviously disappointed here. He's able to walk away here, but a top five here for him in that U.S. Army Outback Chevrolet. We had 11 lead changes among seven different drivers throughout the course of today's race. Caution flag waved eight times here today, and we had one red flag because of that late race incident over in turn number four. At the end of the race, 16 drivers were on the lead lap. And again, it is Kevin Harvick picking up the win, although Kyle Busch led the majority of the laps. total of 237 laps led by Kyle Busch out of the 319 that were run here today. And as you said, Jeff, this is the eighth time this year that Kyle's led the most laps but failed to go to victory lane. It's been a, a, one of those seasons for Kyle Busch. You can talk about a number of different drivers that have had those crazy seasons. When you lead the most laps eight times and fail to go to victory lane, Boy, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. Let's go back downstairs to Jason Toy. Well, we've seen a lot of drivers emerge out of the infield care center. Mark Martin's walked away okay. Of course, we talked to Ryan Newman as well. Also, Kurt Busch, who, uh, whose car got into some flames a little bit as well. He's able to walk out after this uh, melee here on the front stretch. Danica Patrick has emerged out of the uh, infield care center. We'll grab a word here with her in just a moment. But it appears that everybody, that uh, even Paul Menard walked out as well. And Danica is uh, out here. Before we talk about what happened on the front stretch, what happened in three and four? Uh, you know, we had a green-white checkered. It was a nice, exciting finish for the fans and uh, got around one and two and uh, came off, had decent distance on the 31, and he went down and took the apron, got down into three, and um, I, 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 I did not think he was near close enough to be on me going into three, and I left a little bit of room, not a ton of room for sure, but uh, he, I think uh, Tony Gibson said he went down and talked to him, and he was, uh, he said he just went in too deep, so um clipped my left rear, spun me around, and I just tried to, you know, limp back to the line. I didn't know exactly how much damage I had or what, what it was, but just trying to limp to the line and, and uh, get that, you know, get the finish on the lead lap, whatever that was. So still our best finish, but, you know, it's pretty, it's always just, you always want more. You know, I was 13th, I think, or something right around there, and that would have been a really good finish. Shoot, some days I take that in a nationwide car. Obviously a very hard hit on the front stretch. Uh, you're walking out here. Is everything okay? Um, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Um, obviously, there was the the glance in three and four, uh, but there was a. I definitely got airborne and down the front straight. So what's unfortunate is I'm pretty sure that uh, the 39 was one of them. So um, uh, I hope I didn't hope I didn't cause a problem. Um, but um, you know, I think we have different different cars for Homestead. Hopefully, right? We don't we don't run our short track cars on the big tracks, right? And we got new ones next year, so uh, this will make for good charity crash damage body work. Oh, she'll be getting the Sharpie ready to sign a lot of damage here this weekend. There, this day. Danica Patrick still able to walk out here with the top 20. And as she said, that is her best career finish in a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race.